Hi, I'm Roshni. I'm an ambassador in Girl Scouts and I'm also an intern on the National G Team. Girl Scout of the USA's Girl Planning Board that's helping plan Girl Scouts' next amazing girl conference, Girl 2020. This will happen in Orlando, Florida this October. We hope to see you there. So today we're gonna get started on the senior Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey. At the end of this video, you'll know how scientists solve problems. You'll practice looking at and understanding the world around you and you'll find out how you can help real scientists with their research. The activity will take an hour to complete with about five minutes of prep and five minutes of cleanup. You'll need a few sheets of blank paper, some pencils and markers, a bowl, some leaves that you find outside, and a cup of water. So, you'll also need to gather a set of fuel tools to take notes about your surroundings and environment. You may want to include things you have around the house, such as rulers and a magnifying glass. So, let's get started. Scientists study nature and conduct research to better understand how it works. They use what they learn to create solutions to help people, animals, and the environment. To learn new things and do research, scientists use a process called the scientific method. Today, you'll use the same process to find out how you can help real-life scientists learn more about the world. As scientists collect data, they ask questions about their observations. Forming scientific questions is another important step in the scientific method. Once you have a few observations, take a look back and begin to think about what they might tell you about your environment. Then choose three most interesting observations and form two scientific questions for each. If you're wondering if your question is scientific, ask yourself, is this something that's testable? How can I find the answer? Are you interested to find it through testing an observation? And can you collect data and measurement from it? The thing your question is about, in this case, the leaves, will be the subject of your research, and the question you're trying to answer is the purpose of your research. The question we will be trying to answer today are, do leaves breathe? In this experiment, we will to see how gases produced during photosynthesis and cellular respiration are released into the environment. So, when scientists have a scientific question and subject, they make an educated guess at what they think the answer is. This is called a hypothesis. It's an educated guess. It can be tested to see what parts, if any, can be confirmed. However, the hypothesis, it's not always 100% right or wrong. If an experiment confirms a hypothesis, that just means the scientist has more information on the subject and its environment. Now, look back at your scientific question. What is your hypothesis? Use what you already know or can reason to answer your scientific question. In this experiment, the hypothesis we will be testing is if the leaves are submerged in the water for an hour, then small bubbles should form on the edges of the leaves, indicating cellular respiration is taking place. So, once you have a hypothesis, you need to test if it's correct. So, you design a way to test your hypothesis, and that is called a research plan. As you create a research plan, you have to think about what field tools you'll use and what methods you'll need to run the test. After that, you will start your experiment. So, as you're planning, make sure you know that you'll be able to actually run your experiment. If you need to scale it down to something that's easy to do with simple observation, then do that. Make sure to add field tools that help you learn more about the subject. For example, you may want to use tools that will help you show what the subject looks like or how big it is, things such as rulers and magnifying glasses. As part of your plan, you may also want to look at studies from other scientists. If you need to identify parts of nature, like plants or birds, include a field guide research as part of your experiment. Once you have a plan and tools ready, get going and run your test. So, for this experiment, all we're going to need is a small bowl. You're going to want to pour a little bit of water in it. And you're going to grab some leaves that you got from outside and you're going to want to submerge them in the water. You're going to want to leave that to the side in sunlight for an hour and when you come back, hopefully we'll see some bubbles form. When scientists come back from the field, they review their notes to make sure they're detailed and match what they saw. Scientists also reflect and add new notes about what they think their data means. Thinking about and understanding data is called data analysis. It's another step in the scientific process. There are many different ways scientists can analyze data. For example, they might compare it with other data, find different ways to present it, such as using graphs and charts, or look at data and decide that they need to collect more. So, now look at your data and analyze what you think it means. Do your results support your original hypothesis? In this case, this has been setting for an hour and I, I can see quite a few bubbles have formed. If you can see on the underside of the leaves, there's quite a few bubbles that have formed. So this proves our hypothesis correct. So then compare your results against your original hypothesis to form a conclusion. Depending on your test, 
you may not be able to form a conclusion that answers your original question, and that's okay. You're still using the scientific method to learn about something in your world just like real scientists. When this happens to scientists, they might run their experiment again, collect data over a longer period of time, or change their whole research plan. This helps them confirm their results make logical sense. After you've completed your experiment, it's a great idea to think about what you learned, what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you might want to do next. So, ask yourself, what would you change? What did you learn? What surprised you? In this experiment, what we learned is that when the leaf is submerged in the water, it's using light to continue the process of photosynthesis. Part of this process is to let oxygen out of the leaves, and so the bubbles you're seeing form is actually the oxygen being out of the leaves. So, while leaves don't breathe like we do, they still take in and release air. So you're seeing the invisible process of photosynthesis. In this experiment, we used the scientific method to learn more about nature and our surroundings. We took some simple observations, formed a question, and tested our hypothesis, and even looked and analyzed our results and thought about what we learned. So, now that you know about the scientific method, what can you do next? Become a citizen scientist. Citizen science is when a scientist asks regular citizens to help with their research. Here's an example. A scientist may want to know more about butterflies. Are they flying in different places? Are there more butterflies now? Are there fewer? What does that tell us about the environment? They need a lot of information to answer this question, so they ask regular people to go outside, take observations, count the number of butterflies they see, and send them that information. So, what are you waiting for? There's lots of ways to get involved. For example, as a citizen scientist, you can take photos of the sky and send it to NASA through the Globe Observer Project. You can also identify different plants in your backyard with iNaturalist or play online games called Stall Catchers to help Alzheimer's research. Find a project today by going to SciStarter.org. In the upper right hand corner, click on the Partner Gateway for Girl Scouts. SciStarter has more than 6,000 citizen science projects to choose from. We picked a few projects that can be done anywhere in the country at any time of the year and are well suited for Girl Scouts. Of course, you can do any project that interests you. Check out how the to use SciStarter guide for more information on citizen science projects and SciStarter. And that's it! You've completed part of the senior Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey. If you like this video, please share it with another girl. Then check out other activities for senior Girl Scouts. If you had fun doing this, you might want to participate in a citizen science project or take action with the rest of the Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey. And if you're not a Girl Scout, please join us! You can go to girlscouts.org to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.